Again, I am excited to be here. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, I don't know how many of you know that when I came here, I challenged the devil. Say amen, y'all. You see what he just did to me? I tested the microphone, but when it was my time to sing, the battery died. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But he ain't going about to shut me down today. I want to welcome everyone in social media. Um, today's a special day because we are celebrating um, Holy Communion. Amen? Amen. And we are doing it because the Lord has said so for us to do. Amen? Amen? He wanted us to do this so we can remember. We can remember him and remember what he has done for us. May we never forget that, church. And we never forget that. We do it every three months, but we should remember every single day of our lives. And I guarantee you, as if you connect to God the way he wants you to be connected, you will never forget. Yeah. It will be in your mind. It will be in your heart. It will be in your soul. Let's open up the word of God in Exodus chapter 33, verses 9 to 11. So part of my message today at the end, I want to share with you a personal testimony. Uh, so I, I ask you all to please be patient with me this morning. Um, I believe God has a lot to say. The biggest sermon anyone can preach is what God has done for you. Amen? Amen. We have seven people watching us this morning. Praise the Lord. So wherever you are watching us, God bless you. I pray that you have a blessed Sabbath experience. You have it? Say amen. Exodus 33, amen. verses 9 to 11. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of what? The pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all stood in worship at the entrance to their tents. Verse 11. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Mm, don't we all wish that today? Amen? Amen. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. And in case you don't know why, it's because he would stay there as a security guard. Amen? Amen? Protecting the tent. Father God, again, we are going to open your word. We ask the anointment of your Holy Spirit. As always, Lord, hide me behind the cross. I, I don't think anyone here wants to come and listen to me. They have come here to listen to you, Lord. They have come here to listen uh, to a message from your son, Jesus. Therefore, I ask again... Very humbled, Father, that you can hide me behind the cross. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. When, we, when we go back and read verses 1 to 6, we will see, my dear church, that because of God's mercy, say God's mercy. Because of God's mercy, God was going to allow his children to continue into the promised land. Not the promised land that he promised them, but he promised to who? To their ancestors. Amen? Amen? So he was going to allow them to continue because of his great mercy. But because of the sin of the people, God was not ready to go with them. Amen. Are you with me? He was not ready. The Bible says he was not ready. The Bible says that he told Moses, I'm going to send an angel with you. Lest I destroy them on the way to Canaan. Those, man, those are powerful words from the Lord. That, that teaches me that we cannot play with God. 
You know, sometimes we take his mercy and his grace for granted. Sometimes we think, and I've mentioned this before, that God is like a piece of furniture in your house. Whenever you feel like it, you're going to rearrange your life. We can't do that, right? So, so God is merciful, and, and, and even though they behaved the way they did, God was still going to let them go into the promised land. So he was going to send an angel with them, the Bible says in verse 2, to go before them into Canaan. But he also required that the people give a cleared outward sign. Outward sign means an expression, physical expression of everyday living that they would mourn the life of sin that they were living in. That means that we have to show that we are truly repentant. Amen? Amen? That's what God was requiring of his children. Because of visual transgression involving the golden calf. Remember that? So this is chapter 33. If you go down to chapter 30 to one chapter back, you will see uh, the, the blasphemy from the children of God, including Aaron, who was supposed to be the assistant pastor. Right? Because he allowed it. Did you know that that's the reason why, so Aaron was the voice of Moses, but he wasn't the chosen one of Moses, because God, God knew the character of Aaron, right? Aaron was weak, and God knew that Aaron was weak, and he showed it right there, in, you know, at Mount Sinai, right? So, so, so even with the transgression of the children of, of Israel, Moses again, and I put the word there again, right, again interceded from them. Now, I don't know about you, but I'll be grateful if I have a team of elders and church members who are constantly praying for me. Amen. You see what I'm getting? Because, because then I know I'm going to feel good because I have truly men or women of God who are, who are interceding for the pastor. Amen. Not just the pastor, but for the church in general. Amen. Right? So we know that they were not grateful for what Moses was doing. But Moses did it because God taught him how to love his children. That's my prayer. Lord, teach me how to love your children. Uh, teach me because I am their leader. You have put me here for a reason. I don't want them to see in my ugly side. I want them to see my godly side because we all have an ugly side, y'all. Am I talking nonsense here? I'm no saint. <laughs> we all have ugly side, but I don't want people to see my, I want people to see my godly side, Amen. right? So, so the people of Israel were not grateful, but the Bible tells us and teaches us not just on this chapter, but throughout the Old Testament that Moses constantly interceded on behalf of God for the children of God. Heard, you heard what I said. He interceded on behalf of God. He had no power. The power came from who? The power came from God. But he learned during his experience interceding that in order for Moses to have influence over the people, over the children of God, he must first be with God and have the power from God. You see? Because we can have any pastor up here. Any pastor. And a lot of people are motivational speakers. They speak very nicely. They don't eat the words like I do. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? But we don't want motivational speakers. We want godly people. Huh? We want men and women of God to lead the children of God. So Moses realized that from the very beginning. He realized that, Elder Price, that he had to be connected to God. He had to have the power from God to lead the children of God. A leader who is not connected to God cannot represent God. And what's going to happen? Man, I know story. I don't know if this ever happened here, right? Because I... I know what I know since I've been here. But I don't know, and I'm guessing that there's churches who have pastors who, who they, the church cannot wait for the conference to move them. Are you with me? I'm being sincere now. Right? I don't want that. When the time comes for me to go, because unfortunately it's going to come, right? I mean, maybe not. Maybe they'll just let me here for a long time. Right? But I want the church to love me, and I want to love the church. Amen. And this is like, so this is like a, 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 your circle in your family. All right, how many mom and dads are here? Check, raise your hand. I know all, all, all of y'all have children, right? How hard is it to raise your kids? Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's be, let's be frank. Our children are stubborn, right? It's tough. You know? And sometimes you got to, 
You got to, you know, you got to discipline. Are you with me, church? I'm saying this because we are also a family. Right? We are also a family. We need to learn to grow together. Are you, that's my goal. After what happened to me this past three weeks, man, I don't want to fail God. Huh? And I want to help every single one of you here to get to know God. The God that I know. A leader who is not connected to God cannot represent God. I can't stand here and represent God if I'm not connected to God. I can talk nice. Y'all with me? Mm. I can talk pretty. But when it's not word of God, people leave empty. Huh? They get this emotion inside. Man, ooh, that was nice. But when they walk out that door, it's like, they, it's like a balloon. You, you, you poke the balloon and you, it disinflates itself. Right, Brother Robert? But when it comes to God, when it comes from God, the Word of God, you leave this place fire with the Holy Spirit. You can't tell it, but your body is shining because you've just been in the presence of God. Huh? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's my goal. That's what we want, church. Huh? And we got to pray for that. A leader who is not connected to God has no right and has no business representing God and talking to the children of God. Moses understood this. Hmm. Must, he understood this. No leader in the church can have influence over God's children unless he or she has the power and the connection with God. Now the story tells us here that the Lord read the sincerity. Say sincerity. sincerity. The Lord read the sincerity of Moses. He did not just read the sincerity of Moses, but he also saw the self-sacrifice and purpose of his heart. Y'all with me? He, God saw that. He saw that in Moses. So, so when the people of, of God, in, verse, in chapter 32, decided to build this, this calf of gold and, and, and blaspheme against the Father, God was ready to just take them out. But Moses came and interfered, right? And, and it wasn't because of the goodness of the heart of the children of God, because they didn't have any. It was because of Moses. Now, I put this message together today because I feel very special in the presence of God. And I said, Lord, we, we got to stop playing around. We got to put our differences aside. And we need to focus on God's mission. We need to focus on God's love, right? So, so because, because of the heart that Moses had, he said, you know what? I'm not going to destroy this, this, these uh, stubborn children of mine. I'm going to go down, and I'm going to condescend uh, and communicate with my son Moses. Are you with me, church? I'm going to talk to my son Moses. And he went and talked to him. The Bible says, Face to face, as someone is speaking with a friend. Come here, Green. Come up here. This is my friend. He's my friend. Not because he was always my friend, because we just met in July, right? But because of the relationship we had. Come on, somebody talk to me. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Now we're friends. Amen. Huh? Price. You're my friend. Amen. Come here, Price. Amen. You, you may sit down, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, this man here is my friend. Amen. Not because I've always known him, Amen. but because since I've been here in July, we began to know each other. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? Amen. You do not always know God, Come on, but man. you always have the chance to get to know him. Say it. Say huh? it. So don't tell me you can't be successful on, in your man. life and walk with God the way God wants you to walk with him. Amen. All you have to do is get to know Amen. him. Amen. Right? You're right. I want to get to know you, my friend. I am. Go sit, my friend. Go sit. I love you, too. <laughs> don't, don't cry now, please. He's sentimental just like me. <laughs> did, did, you, did you see the, the, the illustration? Amen. You have to get to know God. And God's going to come down. He's going to condescend. Oh, I pray. my wife knows this, man. I pray every day, Lord, I want to be able to talk to you face to face. 
Now, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen if I'm ever in my office and God truly calls me out. But I know that I'm going to recognize his voice because the sheep recognize the voice of the shepherd. Are you with me, church? So if ever God talks to you, uh, you better make sure you know the shepherd because you want to make sure that the voice comes from God and not from somebody else. Are you with me, church? Right? So God decided to come down face to face and speak to his friend. Moses entrusted himself and all his cares to God. I would do that partially. I would do that partially until last week. Until last week. And as I was, I was, I, I wanted to share my testimony. I, I said, Lord, what? I got to, I got to, I got to put it in, in the word of God. God, God. God took me to Moses, right? Because Moses entrusted himself and all his cares to God and freely, check this out, church, and freely opened his soul before him. The Lord did not rebuke Moses. He did not rebuke. He couldn't tell Moses, you know what? No, I'm done. I'm done. I took him out of Egypt. And they could not wait 40 days and 40 nights where you come down from Mount Sinai, they build this gold calf, and then they're, they're saying this gold calf was the one who led, who led us out. Huh? That was, that was over a million. Of, I, don't, I don't know the numbers. Right? It, it was over a million of, of children. And because of one man. Listen to church. Because of what? You know what that means? That any single one person of you here can have the power to intercede for your brother and sister. Hmm? Every single one of us. So he did not rebuke Moses. He, he came down and listened to his supplication. Now God wasn't happy with the children. But the Bible says that, that Moses found favor in God's eyes. Hmm. Because of his sincerity and his sacrificing heart. Being a Christian takes sacrifice. Being a good leader takes sacrifice. And a lot of churches are dying because the church doesn't want to sacrifice. The pastor don't want to sacrifice. Hmm? Y'all can say anything about Pastor Perez when I leave this district. But you will never say that I was a lazy pastor. Never. Hmm? We just finished one week revival. We got two weeks coming up in three months. Amen. And we got another one in October. Plus all the activities that we have to do. Because we have to tell people about the good news of salvation. Yeah. 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 All, the all the prophecies, the prophecies have, been have been fulfilled. You know what's you know left? left? Go, Go preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Yeah. Go preach the gospel. Yeah. That's all that's left. left. Yeah. And, and it's not and to, it's to not save to people. people. Because I don't have the power to save. We don't have the power to save. It's just let, give them the information and they decide what they're going to do with it. Right? But when you're a godly man and woman of God and you give that information, it inspires them. Because they want to know, man, what, what God does he serve? Ooh, that happened to me this week. I can't wait till I get there. Hallelujah. So God tells Moses, I'm going to allow my children to go into the promised land. But I am not going to go with them. That's, that's some tough words from God. I'm going to allow them because I made a promise not to them, but to their ancestors, to, to, to their parents, to their mom and daddy. And because of the promise that I made, and because I am a God of promise, and I keep my promises, I'm going to let them go in. But I'm not going to go with them, he said. Because they are so stubborn that I may, I may end up destroying them on the way there. You know, this, this, this did not go well with Moses. This, this troubled Moses. It, it did not go well with the servant, with the leader, hmm? with the president of the nation, or however you want to call it. The man of God. It did not go. What are you talking about, God? Wait a minute. You are allowing them to go into the promised land, but you're not going to go with us. You're going to send an angel. It's okay. It's okay. We know the angels are powerful. I, I'm just paraphrasing, right? I, I, I know the angels are powerful, but no angel compared to your presence, God. Hmm? 
So the Bible says that Moses met with God outside the camp, the camp, the campground. This is before y'all know. This is before they they built the tabernacle, right? So so they have their campsite, and outside the campsite they have this tent. It was the tent of prayer. It was it was what Moses would meet with God, and Aaron would protect that would protect that tent. So 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 God decided to come down. And as the Bible says, the Lord came down in, 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 the, in the cloud and stood in front of the door. And as, as, as God present was there, the Bible says that everybody else, the whole nation, would stand in front of their houses and worship. Right? Because they knew that the presence of God was there. So, so here's Moses. He gets, he gets down to come down and talk to him. Moses then put his question to God. If God would not dwell among the people, check this out, lest he destroy them, and if his special representative was not to dwell among them, because the angel was not going to dwell among them, read the Bible, the angel was going to go in front of them. Moses was looking for God to dwell. That word is powerful. It's just the same word as abide. And the Bible says, if, you should say, if I abide in you, and you abide in me, ooh, hallelujah, huh? we are indestructible. The devil tried to take me out this past month, y'all. Then Moses asked God, who would dwell among them? Who will dwell among the children? They are your children. I know you love them. The angel is cool. He's okay. He's got power. He, but he's just going to lead us. He can't dwell with us. We want you, God. We want our creator to dwell with us. Who, he said, who is going to dwell among your children? Now, this seems to be a fair question, right? Won't you agree? Yes or no? <laughs> yes. It is a fair question. Right? Questions are always good. There's no thing as a dumb question, right? It's a good question. So the people may have been rebellious, but Moses did not want God to remove himself completely from them. God wanted to keep a distance, yes, because sometimes our children are stubborn. Right? But we, we, can't, we can't separate ourselves from our children. We got to love our children. Even when my kids were growing up, they did things that get mom and dad upset, but, you know, at the end of the day, there are kids. Here comes a hug, the kids. Sorry, daddy. Reconciliation is the best thing, church. We, we make mistakes, but reconciliation is there. Amen? So verse 15 says, Moses tells God, if you yourself are not going with us, do not send us from here. Now, I know, I know that Moses spoke with God respectfully, but that is like I'm standing my ground against what you say, God. Listen to me. This is what happened. Because God already has his mind made up. He didn't say, I'm thinking about destroying them on the way there. No, he said, I will destroy them. I'm not going to go because I may destroy them. So he had his mind made up. So here's Moses. Talking to the almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. He's standing his ground. But you know why? Because Moses knew God. Just like I know Green is my friend. I know Price is my friend. He knew God. Do you understand? When you know God, you can talk to God that way. But if you don't know God, you better be careful how you talk to him. But when you have a close, intimate relationship, you know, he knew. He knew that God could change his mind. He knew it. So he said, wait a minute, God. How are you going to do this? We don't want to go nowhere. <laughs> so when I came to this district, I went through hell and back. Um, and it's okay, whoever's listening, I love you. God bless you. But I'm here now. So there, there I, I, I went through discrimination in my church. Okay, I mentioned this before. I was told in my face that I was too old to be hired as a pastor. You know? I didn't say anything, but in my mind I said, well, you need to, you need to fire every single employer that you have that's over 56 years old. Because they no good. 
But I didn't say that because I'm a humble man. And I said to God, when he, when I got this job, I got, I got the call from Dr. Bird. I, I, I said, Lord, I went through a year. My wife knows this. My first interview after I graduated from Oakwood was that interview that they discriminated against me. The pastor unframed me on Facebook. <laughs> like I'm going to miss him. <laughs> Follow me, church. Okay, God has to be first in your life. And I told God, I said, if you're not going to go with me to Texas, let me stay here in Florida. Because in Florida, I have my family. I lived there since 1989. I was already working for the Southeastern Conference. I was comfortable as an assistant pastor where I was. You're with me, church. But God called me. He said, you're going to be a senior pastor. Hallelujah. Oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> After I got the job, I had people say, well, well, who's, who's, who's the senior pastor? And I said, what do you mean? I said, well, you didn't, got, you didn't get hired as a senior pastor. You, 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 you fresh out the oven. And, and, and I said, I'm the senior pastor. Really? Yeah. Don't you know the God that I serve? Huh? I love y'all, the price. <laughs> Exodus 33, 17. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do as you say. I will do as you say, for you have grace in my eyes, and I have knowledge of you by your name. What does God say to him? I know you. You know me. We're friends. We have a good understanding. Let's keep moving forward. That's what God told him in, in plain English. Right? Yeah, my children are stubborn. But you are asking me, and because you are asking me, I'm going to save them. I'm going to dwell among you. And after this, this is when God gave him the plans of the sanctuary. You know, it's, it's so beautiful. Read the story of Moses. It's so beautiful. And, and the, 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 the earthly sanctuary came for two reasons. One, because he just promised, he just made, rein, reinstated the promise to Moses to dwell with them. Okay, and the other thing is the sanctuary was a type of everything that Jesus represents in our life. So now because of one man, because of Moses, God now wants to build a special place. That's what when people tell me, oh, the church doesn't save me. I don't have to go to church. You better be careful with that statement. Because if you can't be faithful to God in this building, how, what, how, what tells you you're going to be faithful with God if you don't come to church? Huh? And be with your brothers and sisters. Don't let the devil keep that in your mind. Okay? So, so because of that, then after that, as the story goes, God gave him the plans of the earthly sanctuary because it was the place that God wanted to dwell with them. Okay? So at this point, we would expect the prophet to stop interceding. Uh, y'all, we have, we have potlucks, so y'all need to just... He already, he already interceded once, very greatly, right? Because of Moses, God did not destroy, did not destroy the Israelites. Because of Moses, he, he changed his mind, and instead of sending the angel, now he would be among them. Because we know the story. The, the pillar of fire during the night and the pillar of cloud during the day. That was the presence of God dwelling with them. But, but Moses wasn't done there. The Bible says that he did not stop because he felt so blessed. He felt so blessed that God listened to him that he, he dared. And I dare every single one of you right now. He dared to get closer to God. Are you with me? If you think you're having a blessed day today, Guess what? Tomorrow you can have an either blesser day. It's blesser. Is that a word? You can even have a, 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 a blesser day. And if the next day you have a blesser day, then the next day you can have an even blesser, blesser day. Are you with me? Your blessings from God should never stop. You should never be conformed to one thing. My growth in Christ is every single day. Every single day. I'm never satisfied. Let me tell you something. The closer I get to God, the filthier I feel. So 
he's there to grow to draw closer to God. He asked God a question that surpasses our understanding. Exodus 33, 18 says, And Moses said, O oh Lord, let me see your glory. O oh Lord, let me see your glory. He then makes a request that no human being has made before. I beg you. I'm breaking down the, the Bible verse. I beg you to show me your glory. But is the request rejected? God could have said no. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I I I found grace. You in my eyes, you know, and all that good stuff. But are you nuts? You want to see my glory, the great I am? Huh? You want to see my glory? But God does not rebuke His beloved friend. Man, what a powerful God we serve. And God is going to find a way if you allow him to manifest himself in your life. But you got to allow him. Then we hear the merciful words from God, our loving Father in heaven. I will make all my good pass before your face. This is God talking to his friend. Moses wanted a greater spiritual understanding of the nature of God. In answer, God revealed to Moses something more of his glory. The vision that God gave Moses was not to satisfy curiosity about God's appearance. Because he, he wasn't curious about who God was. But because God, that was a miracle of God basically, you know, not, not destroying his children. And because God asked him, he felt he needed to get closer to God. But God revealed the goodness of himself to his children, to his son. He revealed the mercy of God to him. And he revealed the glory of him who was Israel's God, Yahweh. Amen. God said, I will make all the light of my being come before you. And I will make clear to you, my son, what I am. Mm. I will be kind to those who I'm kind. I will be kind to. And have mercy on those whom I will have mercy in the story of Moses, we can see how intimate communion Moses had with God. Mm. If we are sincere with the Lord, if we search the Lord with all our heart, we can have that same relationship that Moses had. Amen. In the first intercession found here in this chapter, the answer of God was, my face will go with you and I will give you rest. But Moses did not believe he could settle for this. He had gained much but he longed to draw closer to his Father in heaven and to obtain a greater security from his abiding presence. Mm. And we know he had burdened all the weight of, of the sins of, his, of the children of God because he loved them. God taught him how to love them. And Moses insisted. So like I said earlier, I've always wanted to be a pastor ever since I was in the Pathfinders uh, because of this bouncer deacon we had I mentioned this before I left the church when I was a teenager and I was out for like 20 plus years but I always had so whenever we get kids here we're gonna have Pathfinder Club y'all because the Pathfinders Everywhere I went, I had the memories of the Pathfinder because that's all the memories I had. I, I was a teenager, you know. I was working on my master guy. This was back in the 80s. And every time I would go, I'm, I'm, I'm in the world and I'm driving around. Y'all see those, the street signs that they have on the side that says Seventh day Adventist Church, uh, 1.5 miles, whatever. Y'all seen those signs on the streets? I would get, I would get excited. And I finally made it. I finally made it. I was talking to my sister this morning. And she says, I'm so happy you're living your dream. And I think I'm not li living my dream. 
I think I'm living God's dream for me. After what happened to me this past week, um, so as a pastor, and I want to be transparent with my church, and I'm going to preach the same message in Amarillo in two weeks. As a pastor, I'm not perfect. I'm human. I'm a sinner. But I have been brought here by God, and I believe that with all my heart. And I know that we have, we go, because I used to be a church member. You know, I'm still a church member. My membership is here. But I, what I'm saying is that I was, at, I was there for a very long time. And there were many pastors up here who disappointed me. Who I asked myself, God, how is it possible that that man could be standing up there? But see, that's the thing about God. God has a plan. We cannot interfere with his plan. You, you see what I'm saying? So, so even though we may not approve or disapprove, we have to pray for our pastor. Because if God did not want somebody to come to this district, as bad as we may see and think that he is or she is, you know, we're wrong because it is God's plan. God doesn't allow something if he doesn't want it. Hmm? I, you know, I, I learned this from a pastor a long time ago. Sometimes the bad people in the church, God puts them in there for you. <laughs> you know? And we've had challenges. I've been here for 10 months. We've had our challenges in both churches. I'm a riddle in here. And I challenged the devil. I really did. I'm not joking. My sister, Sarah, she said, Daniel, you shouldn't do that. And I said, why? God is with me. If I'm going to live my life as a leader of this church, especially as a pastor who is, who is the senior pastor, the senior leader, right? If I'm going to live my life in fear of Satan, I got no business being up here. Are you with me? If you're a leader and you're going to live your life in fear of the devil, you got no business being a leader in the church. I'll tell you right, right now. Send me an email, pastor. I resign. and Don't, don't tell me why. I can put two and two together. But you cannot lead the church of God being afraid of the devil. So I challenge the devil. And every time I've, every, ever since I've been here, I've, I've had my challenges. We all know we haven't had challenges here. We haven't in, in Amarillo. But I believe that everything that we have done has been guided by the Lord. My goal in life and my goal the rest of my life is to serve my king in heaven. That's the only goal I have. I'm 57. There's, there's, no, new, there's no new trade for me. I spent too much money getting my master's degree. So <clears throat> I'm here with the Lord. And the Lord has confirmed me this week that, yeah, I'm here with him. Uh, and my goal is to help you as my church members get closer to Jesus. Okay? That, 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 that's, I don't want nothing else. I just want you to get close to Jesus because Jesus is going to guide this church. But my, my, my number one responsibility is with God. Um, I don't want to disappoint my church, but I don't want to disappoint God first. Are you with me? Because I, I can't do that. You know, I, I am his representative. And as a sinner, we're weak, uh, finite mortals that I am. I have questions and concerns just like everybody else as a church leader and I try and I try to have a faith that is the faith of Abraham you know the faith of Job I really do I really try and sometimes when things happen to me I cry a lot y'all my wife knows this because I'm very sentimental and I say Lord why 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 what am I doing wrong what what am I doing wrong that I'm praying for this and I don't see an answer. And I know this answer, I need it to be a yes. So I don't doubt the Lord. I never did. I would not be here if I did. So last Sunday, the 31st of March, we concluded our revival in Amarillo on Saturday. And she invited me to her house to have a um, Easter lunch and I stayed the church had paid me the hotel for the whole week um, 
I stayed. Then I came home in the afternoon. And I was, we were just talking, her and I, how blessed the revival was. And I know we had our blessings here. We have this beautiful family, uh, Ke Carla and, and uh, Bobby, who are a result of our revival. And they're studying with Elder Green. And we're so happy that you have decided to be part of our family. And if those are the only two people that come to church because of the revival, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Because if God, Jesus had to come down and die for one person, if he had to come down and die for those two people right there, he would have done it. So let's not get discouraged because we don't baptize 20 people. Okay? The word is getting out. 68 followers to over 4,000 followers. Something is happening in this church, y'all. Hmm? So I get home, yeah, uh, I get home Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, and here, bless you, and here's the first thing that, that, that the devil tried to throw at me. So I have, my, I have my laptop and I have a desktop. The desktop is where I do all my work. Um, I have three monitors, I just sit there and I do all my work. I sit down, after I, I get my wife, we get everything inside the house, we settle down. I sit in my office and I smell burning cable. And obviously, it's not normal, right? So I'm looking around. I don't see any smoke, you know? And I'm looking at my laptop. I said, please don't leave my laptop because things happen, you know? So I, I kind of ignored it for a minute. I went to turn on my, my desktop, and it, and, it, and it didn't come on. It was just a white screen. So when that happened, I put two and two together and said, it's got to be my PC, right? So I, I take my laptop from, from on top of it. I open it up, and sure enough, there was a cable there catching on fire. How? Don't ask me. Because I've been around computers since they first came out. Since Windows 3.1. Before Windows came out, it was DOS, y'all. Have y'all ever dealt with DOS? I, I, I've been around computers since DOS. I used to write web pages with DOS. Now it's, it's uh, drag and click, and, and that's easy now. So... For that cable to unpeel itself, touch the metal of the PC, and start catching fire is not normal. So the devil took my computer away. Now I don't have a desktop PC. But I praise God. I said, God, thank you. I went to my wife. She was laying down in bed because we were tired. I mean, we were really exhausted the whole week. And I showed her the cable. She said, what's that? It's from the PC. I said, really? I said, How did that happen? I don't know. So... I praise the Lord. I said, Lord, I know if I would have delayed 15 minutes longer, my house would have caught on fire. Because the computer has a, a screen on the bottom to breathe air, and it's sitting on top of a wood desk right next to a window uh, curtain. I mean, it, it, and the thing with my desk, it's got varnish on it. And this varnish right here catches on fire real quick. No one can take away from me that God saved my house that day. But it didn't stop there. So, I, I didn't tell you guys, but for the last four weeks, I've been having chest pains. And the week before we started our revival here, the chest pain started. But it wasn't a, a, a very heavy uh, pain. It was just light. And every bad thing in my life, I see it as a challenge from the devil. Let me tell you, I see it that way because I know, and I've preached this already here, if you're walking right with God, the devil can't touch you. Okay? But I always come back to Job. And I felt like Job this week. Because of my faithfulness, God was allowing the devil to play with me. I feel like God told the devil, do whatever you need to, but don't touch his life. So, just before we started our revival here, I was having these chest pains. And I know they were not normal because I never had them before. It was like a burning sensation. Okay? It was like somebody was in my chest, squeezing my chest. And I said, Lord, I need you to heal me. You know, we spent a lot of money on this revival. You know, we, I, I, I can't go to the doctor. I, I felt that there was something wrong with me. 
But I wasn't about to go to the hospital because I knew that I could not do my revival. So the week of revival here went, went through, everything was perfect. But every night I would have chest pains. And every night in my shower, I never told my wife, but in my shower I would cry. And I would say, Lord, why, why don't you heal me? I'm doing your work. I need, I need to see a miracle from you in my life. I, I have the revival next week in Amarillo. We can't let the, la the devil laugh at us. That was my prayer to God. And every night my wife would ask me, because it would come at night. During the day I was okay, unless I was moving around fast. I, 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 I mowed my lawn the other day. Three times I had to stop because I couldn't breathe. I was like, so at that point I knew something's wrong with me. But I'm going to finish the revival. I'm not backing down. In Amarillo, the last two days, Friday and Saturday, the pain was so unbearable. And we were in a hotel. And I'm in the shower again, and I'm praying, and I'm crying. I said, Lord, it was Friday night. I said, Lord, we got one more day. And we had baptism that Sabbath, praise the Lord. We had two people get baptized up there. I said, Lord, one more, you got to hold me together. For the last week, I prayed, God, I know that you're holding my life. This chest pain is not normal. And I know that you're sustaining me, Father. And I praise you. And every morning I get up and say, God, thank you for holding me together. Every morning. Thank you, Father, for holding me together. Saturday came. I finished the revival. I got home Sunday night. And the pain came back. But God is so awesome. Because they came back in a way that God was telling me, now you can go to the hospital. You're done with the preaching. You're done with the revival. Now it's time to go take care of yourself. And I was in my shower again, and I'm praying, and I'm crying. I said, God, where's my faith? Where's my faith, Lord? Why don't you heal me? Why do I have to go to a hospital when you are the great physician? Why do I have to go, Lord? You can do a miracle in my life. Oh, my God, it's so good. The pain was so unbearable that I had to call the ambulance. I, it, was just, it was just, I had like a thousand hands in my chest just squeezing me. I go to the hospital the next, next morning. They got me in a, in laying in a bed putting a stent in my, in my artery. So I have a jewelry here. And this jewelry is always going to remind me of the greatness of God in my life. When the doctor finished, he said, you want to see what I did? I said, yeah. I got this big TV there and he showed me, he showed me the, the picture before and after. And it's like, this is the artery and in the middle, it's like somebody tied a string to it and squeezed it. They couldn't even put the stent in the artery. They had to put a balloon in there and open it up. Oh, when they did that, that hurt me like crazy. So they put, so they put a stent on me. Size 15, y'all. I don't know what that means, but he, he asked, he asked, he asked. The doctor asked the guy that was there, "You want a 15 or a 20?" No, he said a 15 will be fine. <laughs> I'm going to find out what that is. <laughs> so when he showed me that, he asked me, he said, Mr. Perez, why? Thank you, Jesus. He said, why? Why didn't you come sooner? So, I don't know if any medical people here, but when they did the blood test, there's enzymes in the blood that, that tells the doctor that I have a, um, an uh, uh, artery, uh, what they call that?
Okay, so it, it tells the doctor that there's something wrong with the heart. And it, it doesn't have to be directly with the heart. It could be with the artery, but it's related to the heart. Y'all with me? So he said to me, he said, he said, Mr. Perez, you were about to have a massive heart attack. But before he said that, he said, why did, why did you wait? And I said, I, I'm a pastor, and we had two revivals, and I just didn't want to fail God. Because I knew something was up. I didn't know how this was this bad. And he said, he said, you, you were about to have a massive heart attack. And then he said, you serve a powerful God. I don't know if he was a Christian. I don't know what his beliefs are, but it came out of his mouth. Immediately, God answered my question. See, I was praying to God, God, why don't you heal me? And I said, Lord, I need to see a miracle of you in my life. And God allowed this to happen because it was like, it was, it was like his friend Lazarus, right? If he would have been there, Lazarus would have not had died. The people would not see his greatness. But he waited four days because he wanted the people to see his greatness, including his disciples. He allowed me to go through this to show me, Daniel, this is how bad it is and this is how powerful I am. You were about to have a massive heart attack. I've been sustaining your life for the last three weeks. This is why I didn't heal you. This is why I didn't take the pain away. Because now you know how bad it was and how great I am. Pastor Perez, now you know that I will always be with you. That I will never forsake you. That's the God that I serve, my dear, all the church. I praise him today. And I'm going to come back and sing that song. We need to keep batteries on these microphones. Hello, the gentleman. I'm done. I could be here another hour, but... My counsel to my church this morning is don't ever give up on God. Because I knew it the last week, I knew that I knew God was sustained for my life. Whatever it is that you're going through right now, whether it's, it's a health issue, whether it's finances, whatever, whatever it is, put it in the hands of God. And if God's going to make you wait three, four weeks, just like he did to me, if it's going to cause you pain, glorify his name. Say, thank you, Jesus. When I got home Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, was it green when you picked me up? Elder Green, my friend, went to pick me up. Thank you, my friend. When I got home, I went straight to pray. And I said, Lord, I will never doubt you again. I am not afraid of the devil. The devil can come at me, but he's not going to touch me. Because God said, I am going to hold you together. Hmm? My order was 90% blocked, people. 90%. The stent couldn't even go in. The doctor said, I serve a powerful God. He says, you were just minutes away from having a massive heart attack. In fact, they were supposed to do some stress tests in the afternoon. And Monday morning, he came in, I guess after looking at everything, inspired by God. Because God said, it's time to save my son. He said, Pastor Bryce, we got to get you in right away, right now. Five minutes came back. I, got, I, got, I felt like the president of the United States. I had four cardiologists, I had nurses, I had everything. I said, whoa, I'm getting scared, but I know God is in control. Don't lose faith, my dear church. Don't lose it, I'm telling you. I am, I am a witness right now of the power of God in my life, the power of God in your life. And he didn't, he didn't do it because I deserve it. He did it because he loved me. 
so this week I felt like Moses and I felt like Job. But I say this very humble because to me in my life God gets the glory. I make it my business to put God first in my life. I just want you to know that. I may make a mistake as your pastor. I want you to come to me and talk to me. Because the worst thing that you can do is see me make a mistake and discard it and then start talking about me and go make things worse. Let's talk about it. Are you with me, church? Because I want to grow with you and I want you to grow with me. And God has shown me this week that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. May God bless you this morning.